ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Premier League sponsored by Twitch TV, hosted by Ainge, and brought to you guys by DittaComTears.com. Today it is the Complexity Palooza. Was that the term? Complexity of Palooza. All right, and it's going to be Complexity versus the world, basically. Uh, today we're watching WU versus Complexity, and of course I'm in the, uh, Luminous. I just call myself Nebula. God, your name <laughs> and your, your presence is just so good that everyone, I, including I, myself, Want to be? I'm Luminous and uh, Nebula's alongside as we cast. This is game number two of W versus Complexity. If you watch, if you miss game number one, well, you didn't miss much because it was just kind of. <laughs> it was a raffle stomp. Yes, but much. it was very interesting. I would recommend go watching it, and it wasn't very long, so it shouldn't take you too long. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, um, before yeah. shortly before this uh, game happened, Nebula were having discussion how about how, about how Dota is not sort of balance, or at least that's how I see it. I'm not sure if you agree with me on, on that part. Yeah, I, I feel like I mean I feel like any game with this many heroes and this many um, items and this this much numbers, just the sheer volume of numbers and statistics in this game is going to make it so impossibly hard to balance that every version is going to have some amount of imbalance. Like, and the rate at which he introduced they introduce heroes and introduce items is going to make it almost impossible to balance that. Like compared to a game like StarCraft, who has a large that has a large number of things as well, but they don't introduce new things near as often. And even that game has to work very hard to try and balance itself. Right. I mean, I mean, Brew Ward for a ten-year-old game was renovating, reinventing itself every year or so. Yeah, and absolutely. that game's been around for ten years. I, I, I personally think Ice Frog's doing such a good job in terms of balancing. Oh, oh definitely. But, but any balance that he makes takes forever to get adjusted to. Remember, like back in Dota One. When Doom got nerfed version after version after version, and it was literally like six months after, like eight nerfs, and then teams like, oh, maybe we shouldn't pick him now. Whereas I feel yeah. like it's sort of balanced because pro teams kind of just stick with the safe picks, even though they might not be the best picks. They are just what everyone else is picking. Yeah, that kind of I, I bet that actually is is kind of helps the problem or you know feeds the problem. Like if if everybody's just doing this mimicry picking and kind of sticking to what they know and what they want to be picking then it's a little bit harder to flesh out all of those numbers after they get tweaked. Like, say some balance happens that makes one hero insane or makes a total strategy insane, but if nobody ever tries it, that's never going to get found. Exactly, yeah. And so then that there's there could be some huge imbalances that a lot of people don't realize. So I think that's one thing that kind of um, speaks to the potential for teams to kind of make it on big on the scene. Like, a team like Complexity... Um, they're all very high skilled players, obviously. But if you have a, a group of high skilled players and you can find four other people with a similar mindset that want to try things, you have the potential to find strategies that are going to win you a lot of games and, and kind of make you famous. So I feel like you know there's a lot of nerds out there that have the capacity to become you know big time Dota players if they if they just try things. And so. it's no coincidence that teams that do try things or and are successful that are also the best team. I guess that also just goes to saying that. You kind of have to be like top dogs to actually have the balls to, or, and the skills to actually try things. Complexity, of course, I'm talking about their Shadow Shaman. I think they're actually the team that really brought it into limelight. Um, same thing with their Dark Seer pick, and Navi with every one of their, you know, op scary yeah. heroes. So it's, it's you know, I think Navi is a team that brought Ventral Spirit back in the scene, I guess. I, you know, she's always yes. there, but... Back in, well, I think DTS was used, right? Back when, now, I mean, NS was there too, right? Right, right. Uh, I mean, in the For... recent Dota 2 trend, um, oh, it's, it's been picking so much more uh, compared to before. Yeah, but she was kind of a known quantity anyway. It's not quite as, you know... Um, oh, this hero doesn't see a whole lot of play. Like, she did see a lot of right, play for right, a long right. time. Yeah. It's not like people just didn't think she was any good. There was, like, there's just so much going on in a Dota match that there's so much strategy and things you can do. And the problem is... Like, one thing that happens is if you're a relatively good team, let's say you're not one of the top five teams, but say you're one of the top 50 teams or top 25 teams, if you're a relatively decent team in your scene and you try something different and it doesn't work, people are just going to flame you and yep. laugh at you and think, yep. crap. And that's the, like, that's, that's the problem. And that actually hurts, hurts creativity. That, yeah. Absolutely. That hurts the scene so much because the scene has so much hostility that they get mad anytime. They, for some reason, nerds are just like, oh, this team's terrible. They tried a thing and it didn't work. It's like, of course, like, they're trying things. That's how it works. You don't have to win every game you play to make yourselves better. Like, it's, a, a practice does not equal winning. That's not how it works. Like, you can get a whole lot better and never win a game. Yep. 
Case in point, EM, well, not, not to say EMC is bad. EMC is the old Dota 1 squad. Now they're known as Infused. They were trying Magnetar for quite a bit. It, they had like, you know, 50-50% win rate. I bet you if Navi was trying that, Magnetar would be in the scene right now. A lot of it is just like, who is actually trying it? Whether they're yeah, winning? Absolutely. And absolutely. It, absolutely. I, it just hurts the fanboy in my heart. I'm shedding some nerd here because... Me too, man. Me yeah. too. I, I can't wait until we get more and more Dota 2 teams that are willing to do that kind of stuff. Um, what we need is we need like four more navvies. We, 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 or navi. People get mad at me for pronouncing it like that because of my dialect. I'm sorry. That's how we pronounce it. Announce it one more time because I was... Well, people say navi, but I say navi because I'm from the American South and we don't have... We don't really say ah very often. We I just see. say ah. So, anyway. I think we, um, we just spent ten minutes not talking about the scene and it felt great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we did. We did have. We do have some bands and picks here. It looks like actually Night Stalker got removed from Wii. All right, I'm gonna say this real fast. That was not a necessary ban. Right? There's not a real great reason to remove Night Stalker from the pool. I haven't seen Complexity play Night Stalker. I'm, I'm sure they do it at some point. Maybe they. Maybe they've done it. And I just don't remember. I think. Um, I think the only time Complexity will ever pick Night Stalker is when they misclick it. Right. So banning Night Stalker there just goes to show. I really don't think we fully understand, or we, <laughs> we, I don't think we, the Chinese team, fully understand. I don't think we fully understand this game either, so. That's, that's true, there's yeah. too much to understand, it's just not possible. I mean, I've been playing Dota for like eight, eight years now, nine years, it's been a long time. And, uh, you know, I still got a long way to go to try and learn as much as I can. I just don't think you can learn everything, to be honest, I think it's impossible. There's just too much, too much, too much interaction. So anyway, we do have a ban on Night Soccer, they did go ahead and, uh, looks like first pick was Fury in here. Uh, very strong uh, first pick, in my opinion, obviously. This is map presence is so strong. So they go ahead and ban the chin. Interesting that when Complexity had first pick, they banned the chin, but which they usually want to want to try and pick up. There's still a Rasta in this pool as well. I fully expect to see Complexity grab Rasta here. Yeah, I mean, Complexity has the lanes to do it. Um, actually, yeah. Beastmaster might actually work out very nicely again in this lane. So maybe even though Texas TC is... It's patent here, heroes, is Shadow Shaman. I think Beastmaster might be better. We'll see where it goes uh, for. They love to pay, play Beastmaster as well. And it's going to be more uh, aura sacking if they do. We'll see. Yeah, they already have the Vino or the uh, the Vinceful aura. Of course, but with the with the pushing power of, of Fury. Wow, they what? grab Weaver. <laughs> Holy smokes. Did we just say this hero suck in game one? All right. Well, hey, every hero has its purpose. All right. You just gotta figure. It's out like no, nah, man. No, 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 no. So a, here's here's a medical. Hold, hold up, hold up. A Medicore team picks Weaver. Like, ah, this hero suck. And then when Navi or Complexity pick, oh man, this hero's so great. No, 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 oh, dude, this is the think best. The hero's pick. very good. I don't think the hero's very good. However, <laughs> let's try and figure out why they would pick it. Um, let's see. Night Stalker's banned, so a silence is gone. Yeah. Okay. And that's bro. All that's all you got. Well, <laughs> there's a brew mother on this other side. You know that's gonna be an orchid. I I, I just don't know. I'm I'm guessing this yeah, is gonna be a, like a pretty terrible. No, pick. this is gonna be a crazy minus armor strat. I think like terror swarm and a medallion. Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend, do it. Grab Shadow Fiend and then I'll be like, all right. Shadow Fiend or Dazzle, it. man, just do it, man. I pick like a real hero. No, shut up. I want to see Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend. No, nah, man. It's Shadow up. Fiend's a real hero. I I seen uh, Quantex been using it. From time to time, I've seen, I've seen it really lose a lot. So we got the uh, Leshrat pick here as the fourth for Wii. So uh, a lot of AOE, a lot of stun, a lot of you know difficult to play heroes. Though they are in Singapore, so there's not there's not like heavy lag here for Wii. I think actually complexity's pings and Wii's pings are kind of the same. Yeah, I think yeah, Wii may be a little lower. I I'm just looking at WE's hero and Jesus, these heroes are like the skill cap on these heroes are so damn high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, definitely. There's there's a lot of potential here. I mean, if we executes this uh, very well, that just sounds so weird to say we executes. So anyway, oh, we do execute a, things. No, no, but it's we executes. Uh, Darkseer, nice. I didn't even realize that Darkseer wasn't banned. What the heck? Okay, so they have a brood mother and a bunch of squishy heroes against the Darkseer. All right, I feel like this isn't gonna go very well for we. Darkseer is just such a powerful hero, especially when you have like easy kill heroes. Um, they go ahead uh -oh. and grab Lion. Here, I like this. I like this. This is a nice chain stun against a hero like Weaver. So they have a, a potential Orchid here in the Broodmother. They have a bunch of stuns. I mean, that is just a, a, a wealth of stuns. And uh, as you mentioned, a high cap for potential play uh, play skill here. And since we are on a, a Asian server, there's really no um, no excuse, really, if this doesn't, uh, this doesn't go well. Yep. 
In terms of laning, we're going to see something like a Darkseer solo, Furion solo, and a, some sort of tri lane, although that can very much change depending how they want to lane in. Actually, I do I do believe Complexity always jungles with Furion. Let's see if they, that's going to change. He's going to pop out jungle with the urn and gank like crazy. Uh, me Looking at the lanes, I would say he is going to. Jungle? Yeah, because they have... Well, they're, who's going to be their mid solo then? Are they going to put... Venomancer in the middle or Weaver? Well, Fluff is playing it. He's generally the support. IX Mike's the support as well. TC is playing the Venge. Ah, it's gonna be a Vengeful middle. Yes, 100%. farming Venge. Yes. No, no, no. Go middle. You're in the wrong lane. Where are you going? No, they're, they're placing wards. They're placing. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's what I want to see. All right, all right. So TC is typically the middle solo. So I'm gonna guess he's going middle. IX Mike uh, playing the Venomancer here. Typical their support. So I don't see Reno going middle. Yep. Uh, we do have Jo uh, on that top lane. Fluff and stuff will be in the jungle. There's going to be that solo Darkseer on bottom being played by Hannah Mongana. And let's see if they're going to guess the lane right. Yeah, they are going to guess the Broodmother on the bot lane. This is this is patented uh, way to lane a, a Broodmother and a line. You just, you know, get to level 3 with the Brood. You send the Broodlings in the jungle. Beat Kid is going to have fun beating on some neutrals uh, with the help of Spiderlings and try to get level 5 or 6. And that's going to make him a very ganking, uh, heavy ganking machine without actually taking any lane of experience. This is a very, very good way to lane it. Yeah, you're basically, you're doing the similar philosophy that you have when you put a Lion solo middle. You know, you're concentrating a large amount of XP on them, uh, but it doesn't cost them a whole lot. They cost them literally just a few levels in the early game. But past that, um, he basically is going to get a massive free XP. And then, of course, they still have the solo mid for what appears to be a Leshrac. It might be, is that going to be Lesh and Urshaker middle, maybe? Uh, Urshaker might roam. It won't be bad, actually. Probably if they see the dual lane mid, if Venomancer actually stays mid with Ventral Spirit, I'm pretty sure Shaker is going to be in position. So we might end up with a dual... Uh, dual lane mid versus the dual lane mid. It's going to be fun to watch. On the top lane, QQQ is going to be playing the Winrun. He's going to be up against J.O. Again, Winrun in theory, in broad theory, should have the advantage. But theory don't mean a lot when it comes yeah, to... Yeah, actually, actually, Weaver has slightly higher damage. Like, literally a point <laughs> right now. But, that, like, yeah, Weaver should... Or, uh, Winrun should definitely win this lane. Now, the thing is, he can't really kill J.O. without any kind of help, though. So, J.O. not really in danger of dying. Uh, if he just focuses on getting some last hits, um, this should be, you know, not relatively terrible for him. But I think, yeah, definitely Windrunner with the favor here. Now, of course, Fluff and stuff being in the jungle makes it a bit more of a problem for Windrunner. I'm looking uh, at his item set, and I, I don't think it's jungle. Because, is it? Can you jungle without any clarity? He's, seems like uh, a no, laning he, build, to be honest to me. He might be pulling. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. That does look like a laning build. He doesn't have any kind of regen mana. Uh, he's got no quick, um, you know, Basilius items or a, a soul ring or clarities or nothing. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know that this is gonna work if this is what they're doing. I, I doubt I, they must not be doing it then, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, he is appearing in the lane, so it's gonna be a support fear on the lane, which is not bad by by any means. Why would Jay, by the way, not spending 600 of his starting go, gonna be going for a quick bottle against Venture of Mid? And with the help of Shaker, he should be ensuring himself every single rune and double damage from the Venomancer, backstabbing it up. If a magic missile hit and a Gale hits, that YYJ is dead. And so far, where teleportation comes in right from the Prophet as well, they're going to ensure themselves a first blood. Venge is going to pick that one up. Quick bottle. You don't need you don't need to jungle if you just get insta kills. There you go. Um, yeah, Vengeful's already got 500 gold on the back of that that last hit, and she's going to get this. Oh, she missed that one, but she's going to get the next one. Yeah, there you go. And uh, pretty much at uh, at bottle now, so that's a very fast bottle. Vinge, Vinge, kill that. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> Up top, Jail's taking a bunch of damage from QQQ. We get a stun here from Wii and a power shot in Jail. Oh, Ooh, uh -oh. oh, Sukuchi doesn't have... Wow. He actually, Sukuchi did get some harass on QQQ. Unfortunately for him, Urshaker was hanging out in the jungle, and despite what I said about Weaver not being in danger of dying, he instantly dies um, just a minute in, which would normally be a first blood, but of course the early gang... Early gang of middle did, uh, did mitigate that a bit. Yeah, I guess now J.O. wouldn't be using his Sakuchi to harass because uh, now the Shaker has shown his presence. We do have Prophet in position though. Now Prophet generally not in lane as a support because he contributes nothing. <laughs> not a uh, slow, not a stun. It's, 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 Sprout is not even a stun because early on tangles are so in high numbers that you could easily just tango out of Sprout that you can't even treat it as a stun. So. Hannah's uh, getting a little bit of damage here on bottom. She does go ahead and just eat that, or he rather eats that tree. I just always want to call him a girl because his tag is a girl's name. Yep. Uh, he just goes ahead and eats that tree and runs his way out. Now, the one thing about this is uh, Fluff, uh, Prophet has a lot of damage and a nice animation, so he could theoretically harass a whole lot. He's not going to be able to get any last hits because they really want to concentrate on Jo. Um, but he's definitely very strong at denying. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this Prophet in lane as well because he suddenly becomes a prime target. 
uh, for them to focus on because, well, Jail's not going to really be able to help out his teammate either uh, if they decide to make a go on Fluff. So Fluff's got to be very careful about the positioning. And, uh, well, we get on the oh, middle lane. Jail just goes ahead and harasses again with Sakuchi and takes a stun right to the face, man. If, if we were in a better, winner is in a better position, that could have gone really poorly for him. Winner actually has not picked up any level of Shackle. This is this is a very, very common build in Chinese Winner play. He picks up Shackle Shot at level 6. I have still not figured out why. Wait, <laughs> but, yeah. He gets a second point of Winner? Yes. Or stats or whatever. What? Wow. It, it's not a like one time thing. I've seen it time and time after again. It's like level 6 Shackle Shot. Let's see if he do, does it again this game. There but, must be a ma mathematical like reason and, for that. Yeah. Typically, when you see something odd like that, it's like sheer math, kind of like the uh, the Storm Spirit level three pool thing. It's right, just right. a sheer unit units of units of pool before they get hit by the nuke. So uh, it's got to be something like that. I I don't know what it is though. I'm back in the mid lane here, YYJ takes a Gale and a Magic Missile to the face. He pops out Stive Balak Edict. In fact, he's going to go down any crazy deny. Oh, he could have used his illusions and attempt yeah. to deny on himself, no, but uh, well. I guess that's actually, not what you're Fluff in there and got that last hit. I didn't realize that. Furion actually was the one with the last hit. So Furion, despite being in jungle, has got himself a kill. Uh, he has level 2. He's close to level 3. Um, that set up top. Weaver dies again. Oh, Shackle this shot is not, not even needed. Well. Not going well for Complexity. Oh, actually, he does have a point of Shackle. Okay, he got now it he does. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if he actually used it there. It looks like he does not, just looking by his mana pool. Uh, that said, yeah, Jo not having a not having a good time up top. That's not something that you want to see from your Weaver. I mean, you pick Weaver because he's so hard to kill in the early game. If he dies twice in the early game, then what are you doing? You know, like what's the purpose? And now on the bot lane, if you look at the jungle, it is what we're talking about here. B Kid having some fun with neutrals. He's level three already. Once he hits about four or five, that Dark Seer, although very good survival hero generally, might be very easily picked off to some very good chain sense from B Kid. Oh, we got another pause. I guess it's time to go watch Taste Toasters. <laughs> AFK, one minute. <laughs> nah, man. We're gonna watch a game and talk about these crazy strats and we were. I got feeding. a crazy strat. I think I think we should just baneling bust and pray that it works. Yeah, we should baneling bust. We should. Hey, I do it all the time. <laughs> I'm not very good though, so. <laughs> Seventeen right, so. CS on TC, eleven on Hannah, twelve on Weaver. On the other side, we have 19 on PCT, uh, 13 on the Windrunner, and just 5 Nothing on Lish. Wow. Yeah, not a, not much farm in that middle lane, so Vengeful Spirit, TC kind of working YYJ, though. To be fair, he has died twice already, so that probably helps um, as far as his lack of lack of last. Let's go. Now, TC, uh, having that 17 creep kills got the very... He actually went for boots first. Does he have a bot? Is there a bottle on a courier that he's bottling? No, he actually did not pick up a bottle, unless Vino's holding his bottle. Is that maybe his? Yeah, um, that's probably is. That probably is because he got the first blood, so he his goal should be a lot higher than. Yeah, yeah. With those last hits, I'm get. Yeah, it's got to be his bottle. That's we got being sent bottom to grab. Oh that man, this lane reminds me of the old Luminous and Nebula lane, man. Remember that? You were Tinker and I'm just Venge, and you just nuke like crazy, and yeah, you just pass yeah. me an empty bottle and be like, "Bitch, go get it." I'm like, "That is Q -Q. that is that is such a gay lane, man." It's like, and it's so fun to play as the Tinker because it's like, "Hey, go get another rune." Refill my bottle. Get out of here. I'm like, QQ, right. man, what's up, EXP? All right, you can have one charge. You can have one <laughs> charge. I gotta be able to laser a third time, you know? Anyway, we got a... Uh, my favorite My favorite of the Luminous Nebula lane was the babysit drow with a pot of... <laughs> oh, dude, that was hot, man. That's classic, man. I gotta tell you, there's nothing more fun than babysitting drow. Like, babysitting with drow, because her lane harass is so ridiculous. Like, Frost Arrows is actually just insane. You pull no aggro. After you, if you level it up, it does so much slow that you just get an insane amount of last hits in. And if you you can literally just kite two heroes off the lane by yourself if you're really trying. Pretty much. As Although that's not, pub, so I, I don't know how, how much that actually means. Yeah, it's, it's pretty terrible as far as actual team strategy goes. But anyway. Uh, Darkseer's a little low on mana down here on bottom, but he does have his Sage's Mask and his Ring of Regen, so I'm guessing a Soul Ring uh, coming very shortly. Yeah, he's about 40 gold right now, so I'm guessing to pick one up pretty quick. Uh, PCT, meanwhile, already has his Soul Ring and another 500 gold, but that's to be expected as he went ahead and rushed it. Uh, there is a shield uh, on Darkseer, so he's Actually, the best of the world. How do, you, how do you feel about uh, Darkseer getting Soul Ring or Arcane Boots? Um, I think... I think he. I prefer Soul Ring in most scenarios. I just really like Soul Rings. I think it's a fantastic item. Shout out to Broodstar, by the way. 
uh, com um, courtesy of Complexity of Palooza my IX Mike here. Famous American player. Indeed, indeed. Um, it's nice to see, you know, Americans on the Dota scene here. Typically, for the longest time, all we had was, like, Fear and Merlini, you know, and Demon. So, uh, obviously, Merlini being gone. Uh, man, I wish he would come back. Remember when he was back for, like, a month and then he was gone again? No, I don't remember that. That was such a tease. No, nah, he was playing Dota 2, when, okay, before the International, when the beta was up. Like, he was playing Dota 2 a lot. And I think even uh, the months after the International, I remember playing a bunch of games with him. And then he's just disappeared again, so. I see. That's a bummer. I think Say Yuri plays a lot though, so at least somebody in the house is playing Dota. Um, <laughs> PCT um, does have 500, so he's probably going to pick up some boots. Uh, probably going to go for a, a pretty fast orchid immediately after that. Now B Kid, uh, with the jungling there from the uh, from the, the spiralings, is level three. He's actually not very high in level despite that tactic, um, but he's actually no, he's about he's about even. Never mind. I think they just started jungling, so it's it's going to ramp up really quick now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, YYJ has himself a bottle finally, though again level four. He's a little bit behind. Uh, Weaver got a Basilius, about nine eight fifty gold right now. He's probably going to go for a, uh, a a magic wand or phases next. Uh, he does have three um, three GG branches or iron branches. Oh, they just changed the name to iron branches. It's not even iron wood. It's an iron branch. So he's carrying a bunch. of I metal. wonder if Ashley Blizzard could, could sue. Uh, he's carrying a bunch of iron branches in her pocket. Like that's what she. How does that even work? I'm looking at her. She looks pretty small. I'm wondering where those branches are right now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're paused. Oh, you, you're not talking about anything. Uh oh, about XSplit has issued a problem. Are we? Uh oh. Uh -oh. I'll tab out to check to see if your stream is.